Okay, so this uh, PowerPoint presentation I call the architectural registration process. This is what you have to do if you want to become a registered or licensed architect in the state of Texas. Each state has its own requirements for what it takes to become registered in that state, but they're all pretty similar from state to state. I am a, uh, I'm a registered architect here in Texas, so uh, that's what I want to speak about today, what the process is if you want to become a registered architect here in the state of Texas. The very first thing that you need to begin the process is a master's degree from a NAB accredited uh, university. NAB is an organization, NAB stands for National Architectural uh, Accrediting Board. Uh, so in order to get a master's degree in architecture, you first need a bachelor's degree in architecture from a NAB accredited school. The program that we have here at El Centro College is we offer a series of undergraduate architectural uh, architecture classes that are transferable into any public university in the state of Texas by virtue of the fact uh, that the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board passed a program known as the Architecture Field of Study. That means that public universities in the state of Texas, if you apply to their program and get accepted into their program, they are required to accept any architecture course credits that you have from El Centro College. And that is regardless of how many architecture classes you take here at El Centro. If you take eight architecture classes and pass all of them and then get accepted at, at, uh, at a university in Texas, that university is required to take all, to accept uh, transfer of all eight of those architecture classes. If you only take one architecture class here at El Centro College, uh, and then uh, get accepted into a university program in, in the state of Texas, uh, that university is required to accept that one architecture credit. So it's a nice little system that we have here. You can take uh, architecture courses here at El Centro and then transfer uh, into a university. Uh, the provision is it has to be a public university here in the state of Texas, but if you get accepted into that university, they are required to transfer your architecture credits from El Centro College. So for step one, get a master's degree in architecture, which really means get a bachelor's degree in architecture first and then go on and pursue your master's degree. And it does have to be uh, at a NAB accredited school. There are some uh, architecture programs out there uh, that are not NAB accredited. So you need to make sure that the program that you're transferring into is NAB accredited. Here in the state of Texas, we have uh, eight public, uh, or, or eight universities that are NAB accredited. And that's, that's listed right here. UTA over in Arlington, NAB accredited architecture program. Texas Tech in Lubbock. Uh, UT down in Austin, University of Texas at San Antonio, also NAB accredited, University of Houston, Rice University, Texas A&M, and Prairie View A&M. Now, I mentioned that uh, the, the architecture credits here at El Centro College are transferable into any public university architecture program in the state of Texas. Uh, uh, seven of these schools are public universities. One of them is a private university, and that's Rice University. That means uh, since Rice is uh, a private entity and not a public entity, if you were to transfer into Rice University, if you got accepted at Rice and wanted your architecture credits to transfer, they are not required to accept those. Since they are a private university, probably what they would do is evaluate the courses that you've taken and it's up to them to decide which classes will transfer. The other, the other uh, universities on this list, they are required to accept your architecture credits. And then this is a website. I'm not gonna go uh, in, into this website here, but if you download this PowerPoint presentation, click on this website, and this just gives you a list of all the, uh, the universities in Texas that are NAB accredited. 
but it also gives you contact information, tells you the uh, the the web page uh, for these different universities and who the head of the program is, the address of the program, the phone number, and contact information for who to get in touch with if you're interested in transferring to any of these uh, universities in the state. That's step one. That's the first thing. You need to get a master's degree in architecture from a NAB accredited program. Step two is what's known as the AXP. That's the Architectural Experience Program. Uh, this is a program that's administered by a group known as NCARB. Uh, the longer you're in, in architecture, the more programs that you'll see with a whole bunch of initials. We've already looked at NAB, we're looking at AXP, now we're looking at NCARB. NCARB is the Na uh, National Council of Architectural Registration Boards. They are located in Washington, D.C., and they oversee the Architectural Experience Program. This is a program designed for when you are uh, working at an architectural firm, you need to get uh, a number of documented hours in a variety of different tasks that are done in an architecture, uh, in an architectural design firm. So this is documented experience in six distinct areas of architectural practice under the direct supervision of a registered architect. These are the six different categories of work that you need to show that you've got, you've engaged in while working at an architectural design firm. Uh, practice management. You have to have 160 documented hours in project management. The way it really works, the way this works is you'll go to work for uh, an architectural firm and you could do this while you're still in school. You could do this as a student internship. You could continue this as a full-time designer at an architectural firm. But basically most firms do it like this. Uh, you have a supervisor who is a registered architect and you get with your supervisor maybe every two weeks or every month or every couple of months, but you meet with this registered architect who is a supervisor of yours, and you go over the work that you've done at the firm since your last meeting with the supervisor. You, you log all this stuff, you document uh, projects that you're working on, the type of work you're doing and how many hours you're engaged in it. And you work, you meet with your supervisor and you, you fill out a form saying, okay, I've done this many hours in practice management, this many hours in project management, this many hours in programming and analysis, uh, and so forth. And you kind of discuss it with your supervisor. If your supervisor agrees with your numbers and your categories, he or she will sign the form and then that gets sent off to NCARB. And you have a file over at NCARB where they track everything that you're doing. So what you need to do, the the uh, the AXP, the Architectural Experience Program, is all about tracking these things. And this, this will take a couple of years. You can't do this in a few months. Getting all these hours documented uh, will take a few years. Uh, so these are the categories that you have to have time in. Practice management, 160 hours. Project management, 360 hours. Programming and analysis, 260 hours. Project planning and design, 1,080 hours. Project development and documentation, 1,520 hours. And finally, construction and evaluation, 360 hours. Uh, so that totals 3,740 hours. Uh, I kind of added it all up and I assumed if you're working uh, a 40 hour work week, get two weeks of vacation a year, that if you did nothing but these exact tasks, it would it would take you about two years to uh, uh, to complete all these things. In reality, there's a bunch of time that you spend on the job doing other things outside of these six categories. Uh, so chances are, it'll take a little bit longer than, than two years uh, to get all of this done. Here's a little explanation of category by category, what all these things mean. So practice management, you have to have 160 documented signed off hours in practice management. 
Practice management focuses on uh, the tasks involved in running an architectural firm. Under this area, you'll gain experience in managing a business, marketing your firm, uh, securing projects, working with clients, and sustaining a positive and professional work environment. So uh, when you're engaged in this, in the architectural experience program, think about the tasks that you're doing and the tasks that you need to do, and think about how you can kind of you can get experience in this. How are you gonna get experience marketing your firm or working with clients or securing projects? You might see if you can get with those, uh, the higher ups in the architectural firm, maybe the partners or the principals, and just ask if you can tag along with them or, or sit in on some of their client meetings. That would count as practice management and that would kind of allow you to see how, how your firm is bringing in work, is bringing in the clients, how they're marketing themselves. Project management is 360 hours. Project management focuses on delivering projects that meet your contractual requirements. So you'll, you'll be prepared to budget, coordinate, oversee, and execute a project. So project management really isn't doing the design work yet, but it's doing kind of the, the groundwork, the basic research. Uh, uh, kind of compiling the numbers to assemble a budget, coordinating things, getting uh, maybe helping to assemble a team of consultants, landscape architects, structural engineers, uh, that kind of thing. It's the logistics of what it takes to to do the prep work of uh, of getting a project off the ground. You could even say that probably. Um, uh, maybe even doing some research into the codes that are required by whatever jurisdiction you are building your project in. You know, getting on the phone with this with the local city uh, government and finding out building codes, fire codes, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Any kind of code related research would fall under project management, and you need to get 360 hours in that. Programming and analysis. This focuses on the first phase of a project, often referred to as pre-design. This, this goes back to that earlier PowerPoint presentation where I talked about the phases of a project. So programming and analysis, 260 hours in pre-design. In this experience area, you'll complete tasks related to researching and evaluating uh, client requirements, building code and zoning regulations. Oh, I guess I said building code earlier. Maybe that maybe that falls more into this category here. Building code and zoning regulations and site data to develop recommendations on the feasibility of a project. Zoning focuses on uh, things like um, really kind of uh, what sort of functions are going to be going on in the building that you're designing. Diff uh, usually cities are divided up and uh, different regions of different cities have different things going on. There's usually a residential area or an industrial area or an area geared towards retail or office functions. That's what zoning entails. So that you might be doing some research with the city, uh, making sure that whatever you're whatever you're designing is compliant with the zoning requirements for that location. Project planning and design, 1,080 hours. Project planning and design focuses on the schematic design phase of a project. In this experience area, you'll learn to lay out building designs, review building codes and regulations, coordinate the schematics with your clients, with your consultants, and communicate design concepts with your client. So this is really kind of getting into the nuts and bolts of the design work right here. And they want you to get 1,080 hours of experience in project planning and design. Uh, let's see, coordinate schematics with your consultants. That really involves taking the, the floor plans that you're generating and making sure that all your consultants are getting the most updated versions of your floor plans so that they can then draw over them or superimpose onto them their own component. If they have a, if they have a floor plan of your building, the landscape architect knows where to put in paths and trails and different types of planting and that sort of thing. If your structural engineers have plan and section drawings of your building, they can start working out how the structural system is going to work so that uh, uh, it, it, the end result, the desired end result that you, the architect, have in mind 
is is accomplished. Uh, a question I always get from students about this is, uh, when it comes to the structural system of a building, how do you choose a structural engineer? And how, what's the relationship between an architect and the structural engineer? What's that working relationship? In many instances, uh, you'll, you'll use a structural engineering firm if you are designing a really big project. Chances are, if you're just designing a house or a, a, or a townhouse, something small, you won't need a structural engineer. But if you're designing a big hotel complex or a big office building, you probably want to use a structural engineering firm to figure out how you know, the loads, the weights that the building needs to resist in order to stand up. And chances are uh, the firm that you're working with, the architectural firm that you're working at, probably has a good working relationship with at least a couple of different structural engineering firms. Chances are you're not just going to be picking a new uh, uh, structural engineering firm out of the yellow pages, but you've got someone in mind that you've worked with a number of times, and they kind of they understand the type of projects you do, and your firm understands how they tend to design structural systems. So usually you'll you'll be working with a firm that has done a number of projects with your own firm. Basically, you as the architect don't need to know absolutely everything about structural engineering, but you do need to be educated enough in structural engineering that you can have an intelligent conversation with a structural engineer. You can express to them what your desired uh, result for this building needs to be. And when they offer you some recommendations or some choices, you can, you can understand what, what they're telling you and make a good decision uh, uh, as to which way to go from a structural engineering standpoint. But you, the architect, set the course. You, the architect, create the design, and then the structural engineer is paid to figure out a way to make that design work. If you're designing a 40-story tall building, you want to be able to lay out the spaces and, and make sure that building is compliant with all the various uh, building codes and... Uh, um, uh, you know, means of egress or means of exiting in, in, a, in the event of an emergency, you need to make sure that your building is code compliant and it successfully uh, meets the desired results of the client. The structural engineer will then take your design and figure out how to really make that work. How thick do the columns need to be? How many columns do we need? How far apart can they be spaced? Uh, what type of beams are we using? Uh, they, they take your vision and figure out uh, the reality of how to how to make that happen. One thousand five hundred and twenty hours will be devoted to project development and documentation. Project development and documentation focuses on projects after the schematic design has been approved. So this is real. This kind of coincides with the CD or construction documents phase of a project. Uh, uh, NCARB in their AXP, their Architectural Experience Program, wants you to get 1,520 hours in dealing with uh, uh, generating construction documents. Uh, this, this particular area focuses on projects after the schematic design has been approved. In this area, you'll gain experience preparing construction documents and coordinating with regulatory authorities to gain the necessary approvals for construction. So you'll be preparing construction documents and you'll be sending copies out to uh, the, the local city government to get uh, building permits and, and approval to do things. Um, I remember years ago working on a project in Fort Worth that was, uh, that was uh, kind of adjacent to uh, the, uh, the Trinity River in Fort Worth. And we had, uh, we were working right next to, we were building a 12 story tower next to uh, uh, an Army Corps of Engineers levy. And they, the Army Corps of Engineers was really concerned about us excavating into the earth to, to dig out a, uh, an underground parking garage right close to a levee or a big artificial embankment holding back the river. And there was all sorts of concern that if we excavated too deeply or, or did this improperly, 
that the levee would fail and the whole region that we were building in uh, would get flooded by the Trinity River. So we had a whole lot of meetings with the Army Corps of Engineers working out how an under a two-story underground parking garage right next to uh, an artificial embankment holding back the river could be excavated in a safe way without flooding the site. That also kind of coincides with this whole project development and documentation phase. Construction and evaluation, 360 hours. Uh, construction and evaluation focuses on the construction administration, that's the CA portion, and post-construction phases of a project. This includes being out on the job site, meeting with contractors, clients, and building officials, and punching lists. This is what I talked about when I in the last PowerPoint presentation when I was discussing CA, construction administration. This might be the most difficult uh, of the categories to get your hours in construction and evaluation, especially if you work for a design firm that does not do construction administration. If you work for a firm where they do CA, you could always you can get in touch with the person who goes out on the job site, tag along with them, and get your 360 hours uh, fairly easily. But if you work at a design firm that doesn't do construction administration, this is going to be more difficult. So of all the categories that we've looked at here, uh, all those other tasks can be done right there in the office. This, this category, category number six, you actually have to go out to job sites in order to get this accomplished. So kind of keep that in mind. When you're working at, uh, at, a, at a firm, even if it's just a student internship, you, the, these hours that, you're, that we're documenting here, these can come from time uh, where you're not a full-time employee, but you might just be a student intern. You can still engage in this AXP and start documenting the tasks that you're doing. But when you're working at a firm, any opportunity you can get to go out to a job site, see if you can take advantage of that actively find people who are going out to the job site to review things and ask if you can tag along with them. Chances are they're happy to have you. Chances are they want you there. They will explain the different things that you're seeing. They will educate you as you're out in the field. Okay, so meeting with contractors, those are the people building your structure. The client is the person who owns the structure, who's paying all the bills. Building officials from the city. Punching lists. Uh, punch lists are just lists of tasks that need to be done at a given point in time in the construction of a project. And typically, you just you go through with a clipboard and 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 a, a list of tasks that have to be done, uh, and you just kind of verify whether or not those tasks have been done. Verify to the best of your ability. There may be things that you can't visibly see. Uh, but you just, it's kind of punching list is just going through and crossing off items off a checklist that uh, uh, should be done by this point in time. Or if they're not done by this point in time, making a note of it so, uh, so they will get accomplished. This is the website. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna click on this website. Download this PowerPoint presentation. You can click on all these links. But this uh, is the NCARB website, National Council of Architectural Registration Boards. And uh, this is an explanation of the AXP program, the Architectural Experience Program, how to get it up and running, how to set up an account with them. I think you, you, uh, you, you submit some paperwork and you pay a fee. I think actually the, the architecture firm that you're working at will pay that fee for you, typically. That's, that's what they do. Um, but this is the website where you can, you can get a full explanation of the AXP process and get an explanation of how to go about setting up an account with NCARB to do this. Those are the first two things you have to do. Get a master's degree in architecture and uh, engage and complete the architectural experience program. The third thing is the biggie. This is the ARE. This is the architectural record exam. This is the big, this is the test. And you gotta pass the test. The ARE, uh, is administered by NCARB, and the results of your tests are sent to the Texas Board of Architectural Examiners, the TBAE. So the NCARB is a national organization. NCARB is located in Washington, D.C., 
and they they administer the exam for all 50 states. You taking the test here in Texas, uh, NCARB will grade the test and submit the results to the local Texas uh, Oversight Board, uh, which is known as the TBAE. The TBAE oversees the architectural registration process here in the state of Texas. The ARE can be taken after the attainment of a master's degree in architecture and after six months of documented AXP experience. So this is a nice development. When, when I was going through the process to get licensed, you had to get your master's degree first. You had to complete the entire architecture experience program, all 3,000 hours of that before you were eligible to take the test. Now they've loosened the rules a little bit and you can, you can start taking your ARE exams and it's a series of exams. It's actually a series of tests you can start taking those tests after only six months of documented AXP experience. Now, in order to get registered as an architect, you have to complete all these tests. You have to have the master's degree in architecture. You have to complete uh, all of your documented AXP hours, and you have to successfully pass your uh, architectural record exam. You have to do all those things to get to become registered as an architect. But what's nice is the rules now allow you to start taking the exam tests at an earlier point in time. You only have to have six months of documented AXP experience to start taking the tests. The ARE, Architectural Record Exam, is actually comprised of six divisions that must be passed in a five-year time frame. You've got six tests, and from the moment you start taking test number one, you've got five years to pass all these things. If you fail one of your tests, you can retake it, but you've got to wait uh, six months before being eligible to retake it. So these are the six different tests that you need to take and pass to complete the architectural record exam. Project management, uh, practice management, project management, programming and analysis, project planning and design, project development and documentation, and construction and evaluation. Do these six categories look familiar? They should. It's the same six categories that you've documented your hours in for the, archi for the architectural experience program. So the ARE is coordinated with the AXP. Everything kind of fits neatly with the, each other, ensuring that you're going to be getting uh, uh, experience in those areas that are, that are necessary in order to run an architectural practice. Uh, like I said, once you start taking your first exam, uh, it's like the meter is running in a taxi cab. You now, the clock is the clock is ticking. You've got five years to pass all these things. Uh, in general, you have to you got you have to apply. Uh, you got to fill out some paperwork online, I think, to to set up taking one of these tests. Uh, there's a fee uh, that goes with it. Um, when I took the test, uh, you know, back in 2006, 2007. Each test cost roughly about $200 to take. And a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, if you're working at a design firm, they will pay uh, your fee to take, a, to take each of these tests. I think they'll only, usually they'll only pay for one go round. If they paid for you to take a test and you fail the test, and then six months later, you have to retake the test, I think the second time you have to pay for that fee out of pocket. But just in generally speaking, in general terms, uh, the architectural firm that you work for will usually uh, pay for one go round taking these tests. These tests, uh, uh, it's only six tests. You've got five years to take them, but it's really easy to let this slide. Once you start taking the test, if you, if you, it's really easy to kind of forget about this. Uh, you may take test number one, pass it, and then you're working at a design firm and you're making money and you're enjoying what you're doing, you're keeping busy, and you start to forget about taking the tests. And this this happens for real. And then you realize, then at some point in time, you realize, oh my gosh, four years have gone by. Now I've got one year to take the remaining five tests. I would recommend don't let this slide. When you're at the point where you're getting ready to take your first test, work out some kind of schedule for yourself. Keep dis Be disciplined about this. Don't let this slide. Don't forget about it. Don't try and put this off until the last minute. Here's one of the heartbreaking aspects of taking the ARE. 
if you're if you take these tests and you you take and you successfully take and pass these tests but if you don't complete all six of them by the time your five year window is up then you have to start all over again from scratch so any tests that you've already passed those get erased and you start over with the tests from the beginning so if you've taken and passed five of the tests and your five years uh expire it's as though you've taken zero tests and you have to start over again please don't put yourself in that position and that does that that happens to people it's really, life gets in the way of stuff like this. It's really easy to forget about stuff like this, especially if you're, if you're working and enjoying what you're doing and keeping busy and you're making, you're making some good money as, a, as an architectural designer. It's really easy to kind of forget about this stuff. Don't let that happen to you. Keep on top of this. This is the website. Uh, again, you can download this PowerPoint and go here. But this is information from the NCARB website, National Council of Architectural Registration Boards. And NCARB uh, has information here on getting, getting set up to start taking the architectural record exam, the ARE. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the process, how to get registered as an architect in the state of Texas.